Okay, so let's talk about trigonometry. So the most basics of trigonometry is the fact that, first of all, we have a right triangle. Second of all, we're talking about an angle, which we call what this sign is right here. It says we're talking about this angle right here. So if I'm talking about this angle, then I'm going to reference everything around this angle. So first of all, the side opposite the angle is called the opposite side. The side that's right next to the angle or touching the angle is the leg that's adjacent to the angle. And of course, the right angle is always pointing at the hypotenuse. So that being said, that's really all you need to know to talk about the next part. So go ahead and copy down my diagram here. Let's start with describing these three right triangles. So first of all, what did I say if I'm talking, if this is the angle that we're referencing, what would we call this leg of the triangle? Adjacent. 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 What would this leg be called? Opposite. 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 And what would we call this right here? This is the hypotenuse. I'm going to put a check next to everything that is known, which will make sense to you in just a moment. So let's start off with if I know what the hypotenuse is and the opposite leg. I would call this so. The sine ratio is talking about the opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. Wait. You'll see in a second. Mm -hmm. Hold on. No, you want to check. Guys, just copy it down. Yeah. It says so. Sine. S I N E equals opposite over hypotenuse. It's not S I E. No. It's S I N E. You'll see. You guys trust me, right? Usually I'm pretty good about this kind of stuff. All right, adjacent and hypotenuse. If I know the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, then I would use cos. Which means the cosine is equal to the side adjacent compared to the hypotenuse. Now it's making sense. And finally, I would compare, if I knew, the adjacent side and the opposite side. I would call this TOA. Which means tangent is the comparison of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So this is fondly known as so ka toa Okay, so why don't you go ahead and write this triangle down and we're going to use so ka toa Okay, so this says find sine of L, cosine of L, and tangent of L. Also, so that's talking about this angle right here. 
So I'm going to find, let's change my width of my line. So I'm going to find the sine of L. I'm going to find the cosine of L. And I'm going to find the tangent of L. The next part of this problem asks me to find the cosine of n, the tangent of n, and the sine of n. So, that would be this side. So when I'm looking at this angle, n, I'm also going to find the sine of n, the cosine of n, and the tangent of n. So let's begin. The sine of L. So if I'm talking about, bless you, if, you, if I'm talking about this angle right here, and I'm talking about sine, which is so, uh, then I would be talking about the opposite side of L, which is 8 over the hypotenuse, which is 17. See it now? What about cosine? Cosine is ca, is our little abbreviation. Adjacent over hypotenuse. So what would be the adjacent side to L? 15 over 17. And the tangent is toa, which is opposite over adjacent. Let's do the sine of n. So the sine of n, sine means so what? So that's opposite, which is what? What's the opposite? No, of n? 15 over hypotenuse. Cosine is ka. What would that be? 8 over 17. And tangent is toa. What would that be? Opposite over adjacent. 15 over 8. And I've already put these in a calculator. When I put 8 over 17 in a calculator, I get 0 0.47, which is kind of convenient because it's also the cosine of n as well. Fifteen divided by seventeen equals eighty-eight hundred. We also have a fifteen over seventeen over here. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. Finally, eight over fifteen is fifty-three hundred, and these don't match. But look, they are inverses of each other. Hmm, I wonder if that has anything to do. Is that just coincidence? I think not. One and eighty-seven hundred. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you got if you got them, use them, guys. If you've got them, use them. Use the calculator to find the tangent of fifty-six. I'm going to show you how to do this. Some calculators, the keystrokes are: you hit tangent, you put in fifty-six, you hit enter. Or you put in 56 and you hit tangent and you hit enter. If you don't know how to use your calculator, come by after school and I will help you. Your answer should be 1 and 4800. This one doesn't work for some reason. We're going to skip over this. Okay, so let's use that right now to do the next problem. Write down this triangle. Don't worry about the rest of the words. And we'll look at this in a second. Alright, so let's look at this problem. This is a classic problem. A fitness trainer sets the incline on a treadmill to 7 degrees. So here's your fitness trainer. 
Okay? So this is a seven degree incline. So that's the angle we're concentrating on. The walking surface is five feet long. Right here. Little, the little walking surface is five feet long. Approximately how many inches did the trainer raise the end of the treadmill from the floor? How far up is the treadmill off the floor? Okay, it asks me how many inches. Well, we've got feet right here, so we better change this to inches. How many inches are in five feet? Sixty inches. So, ka-toa. Which one do I need? I have the opposite, and I also have the hypotenuse. So, which one do I need? So, so, I look at the information I have. I have a Y and I have 60. I have the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is so. So I'm going to use the sine function. With the y like yes. I have sine. What is the length? I'm sorry. What is the degree? Seven. Sine 7 equals what's so? Opposite over adjacent. I'm sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. So what's the opposite? Y over 60. How do I solve for Y? 72. Multiply both sides by. Isn't that how we get rid of fractions? So my answer is 60 times sine 7 equals y. So this should look like this in your calculator. 60, push the sign, 7, enter.